So hey everybody, I hope you all are doing great. Welcome back to DP series and before starting the video itself, we are so close to 300 subscribers. Press that subscribe button and let's get it. Right. So this knapsack problem is the next problem we are, which we are going to see. It is one of the most important dynamic programming problems. And if you have studied dynamic programming, the interviewer will already, you know, imagine, assume that you already know this problem itself, right? It is a possible thing that you might get this problem as it is in the interview itself, right? So interviews do that, right? So let us understand the problem and look at how we are going to approach it. So let us look at the problem statement itself. You are given weights and values of n items, weights and values of n items. Okay. Put these items in a knapsack of capacity W to get a minimum total value to, to get a maximum total value in the knapsack. All right. What is a knapsack? Somewhere around here, I'm showing the photo of it. Knapsack is just like a bag, right? So some weights and values are given for n items. You have to put items in such a way that you are able to fill the items with maximum and maximizing the profit you are able to get, right? Just think like a thief, right? When you go inside a house and it's like the thief sees a lot of things, right? He wants to put those things who take lesser weight and have more value, right? So a value is there in the knapsack, right? There is a value and weights and values of every item is given. We have to put all these items in the bag such that we get the maximum weight in the knapsack, maximum value, total value in the knapsack itself. Note that we only have one quantity of each item. This means that you cannot take an, an item multiple times. Only you can either pick that item or you can either drop that item. Now here, you know, uh, some recursion hint is there, right? Remember target some subsets. We did this problem. Pick an item, exclude an item, right? So let's move forward. So in other words, given two integer arrays, values and weights, like every va values of zero tells us the value of the zeroth item. Weight of zero tells us the weight of the zeroth item. Okay. You remember the value of value and weights to the n items respectively. Also given an integer W, which represents the knapsack capacity, find out the maximum value subset of value such that some of the weights of this subset is smaller than or equal to W. Basically select all those items such that the weight is lesser than or equal to the capacity of knapsack and the value is maximum, right? You cannot break an item. You can either pick or don't pick an item, right? Zero, one, this is just zero, one. Zero means not pick, one means pick, okay? So let's analyze the test case on the board itself and let's look at this problem statement more closely. So now let us see a closer look to this problem. Basically, values and weights are given to me to n items. So zeroth item weight is two and value is six. Oneth item weight is two, value is 10, weight is three, value is 12 and so on, right? These are the n items I'm having. And this is the capacity of the bag I'm having, the bag, like the, the knapsack I'm having, right? So I have to choose items in such a way such that I'm maximizing the value, but I'm not exceeding the capacity. Let us look at this. So if I choose this item, and if I choose this item, and if I choose this item, can you look at this? I'm actually exceeding the weight. Four plus five is actually nine, which is of course greater than eight itself. This means that these items cannot be chosen, right? Let me tell you one arrangement where I'm making the maximum profit. If I choose these two items, first this item, then this item, what is the weight I'm left with? I have chosen this item of weight two and I've chosen this item of weight two. I am left with weight of four. If I choose this item next, I'm using all the weight. You know, I, I can use the whole weight or I can, you know, leave some portion of the bag empty as well, according to the profit I want to make, right? Right now, if I choose these three items, right? Can you see that I cannot add anything more in the bag itself? Yes, then I'll be exceeding the capacity. And can you see this? I'm actually maximizing the profit. This is what? This, whatever this thing is summing to, let's, let us look at it. This is a uh, 26, uh, I guess. Huh. So it is a uh, 16 plus eight, right? 16 plus eight is 24. So it is summing up to 24, right? I think there is uh, like, okay, let us try some other um, arrangement if possible. Instead of this, you know, right now I'm able to make 24, right? Instead of choosing this, if I choose this, am I satisfying the back capacity? Yes, definitely I'm, I'm satisfying, satisfying the back capacity and the total sum I'm able to make right now is what you can see 28. Yeah. Is it better than 24, which was, which I was making earlier? Definitely. Yeah. 
definitely you can see 28 is much much better than what i was making earlier right 28 is much much better than 24 so you can definitely see although right now i am only taking you know 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7 only 7 portion like 7 weight of my bag one like one amount of weight is still remaining but you can see if i choose these three items i'll be making the maximum possible profit in the bag itself right so this is the test case let me do one thing to make this test case little bit better i will you know rearrange these items such that these three items uh, are not together right so i'll you know replace this with this item and yeah let us let us take so let us you know uh, try to look at this like i'll replace this with this okay and i'll keep it here right i've cha i've changed the order of the items right I've changed the order of the items. So items are looking like this. Still, like if I choose these three items, I'll be making the maximum profit, right? So let us look at how we are going to approach this problem. I hope problem statement is clear to everybody that what is the motive? We have to make the maximum value. At the same time, we have to select such people such that I'm not exceeding the capacity I'm having, right? So let's look at the uh, some approach kind of thing for this problem, recursive. So now I'm going to derive a recursive solution for this code, definitely. What we learnt in the problem statement is that I can either pick a value or I cannot pick a value, right? On the basis of that, I'll do a similar thing, similar to target some subsets. I want to make a decision for zeroth item. And right now, the remaining capacity in my bag is 8. These are the two parameters I'm going to play on. This is the ith item I'm standing on, for which I have to make a decision whether to pick or to not pick. This is the thing, this 8 is representing the re like remaining weight of the item itself, remaining 8 of my bag, remaining weight. So, rim, rim weight, rim cap, we can say remaining capacity. Okay. So, if I pick this 0th item or if I not pick this 0th item, these are the two choices I'm having right now. So, if I pick this 0th item, you can definitely see that if I'm picking or if I'm not picking, if I'm picking or if I'm not picking, if I'm picking this 0th item, can you see that I'll be, I'll be, you know, next, next answer I'll be trying to, I'll try to get from the one -th item. And one thing is for sure that the remaining capacity will be what? 8 minus 2, which is 6. I have picked the 0th item. So remaining capacity is this much. Right. Okay. Right now we are not calculating the answer itself. I'm trying to show you the recursive code itself. So 1 comma 6. Okay. If I'm not picking 0th item. If I'm not picking this 0th item, what can I say? If I'm not picking this item, I'll be asking for the like the, the choice of the next item, but the remaining weight will remain the same. Remaining capacity will remain the same because I've not picked the 0th item. Okay. Let us look at look at this again. I don't think it is clear to everybody right now. Let me just, you know, move a little bit forward and then it will be very clear. So now we are trying to make the decision for the one -th item. If we are picking the one -th item, the next answer will be from the two -th item and, and the remaining capacity. If I've picked the one -th item is what? Six minus four, which is two. Okay. If I have not picked this one -th item, this means that two comma, two comma what? Can I simply say that I have not picked this item? So six will go as it is. Yes, definitely. Right. So let's try to explore this side a little bit more of the tree itself. I'll bring this along with me. So if I pick this item, if I do not pick this item, if I pick this item, if I do not pick this item, if I pick this twoth item, if I pick this twoth item, so if, the, if I pick this twoth item, look at this item very closely. If I'm picking this item, next, like next thing I want to ask from the third item. And one thing is for sure that if I pick this item, the remaining capacity will be what? 2 minus 3, which is minus 1. This is a negative capacity. This is a negative capacity. Will I be able to make anything out of it? No. Negative capacity is invalid. This means that no way I can pick this item. I will return minus infinite from it. That I cannot pick this item at all. Okay. If I do not pick this item, if I skip this item, then the next question will be from the third item itself. Okay. And Remaining like remaining gaps we will say stay same because I have not picked this item. Now look at this. We, this is the base case definitely. We don't have to explore this. We will explore this now. So then now the question is from the third item, right? This is the third index. So it is the question from the third item. So if we pick this item or if we do not pick this item, if we pick this item or if we do not pick this item, if we pick this item, 
the next question will be from the fourth item and the remaining weight will be remaining capacity minus the capacity of this item is zero can you look this closely look at this closely we have reached zero capacity this means that i cannot add any more items to this this means that i can simply return a zero that if zero weight is remaining zero my bag is having zero capacity i cannot add anything so the value will be zero for it correct this is another base case so one base case is when the capacity goes negative and another base case is when the capacity is becoming zero it is similar to target some some problem itself i'm telling it again again if you're not following this series like in a proper order you might feel a little bit uh, you know uh, not familiar to what i'm trying to say but 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 like if you want to get this idea what i'm talking about in more depth you can definitely look at the target some some problems but don't worry if it is not clear till now i'll i'm iterating the whole tree i i do the whole recursion thing in my problems right so don't worry whenever the weight becomes negative return in minus infinite whenever the uh, this becomes zero it becomes zero right now i am not uh, you know, assuming that you are you know understanding everything i am just assuming that you know you are getting a hang of it i am just trying to get like make you get a hang of it you are just look at this just don't try to think any thing in the future by yourself right just just listen to me first when we'll be returning then you will realize that why am i returning minus infinite and why am i returning zero from it okay so now the question is like zero capacity this means i cannot make any profit i'll return zero all right so 3 comma 2 we are not picking this third element this means that next question will be from the fourth element okay and the remaining capacity will stay the same because i have not picked this item all right let us explore this now for let's question the fourth element itself now if we pick this fourth element or if we not pick this fourth element if we pick this or we not pick this if we pick this fourth element if we pick this fourth element what will i do yeah if i pick this fourth element you can definitely see here weight is bigger than what i am having like remaining right so definitely next question will be from the fifth element it doesn't exist actually but one thing is for sure that remaining weight will become what remaining weight minus the weight of this item because i am picking this item up this means that remaining weight is minus 3 this simply means that i am going lesser i have picked more than what i can handle i will return minus infinite we have to calculate maximum right that's why i am kind of returning minus infinite here so that it doesn't get selected while returning don't worry you will understand this very closely full focus so whenever negative weight we return minus infinite right now we are just assuming this okay so if i am not picking this fourth item the next question will be from fifth item but the weight will remain two only now is there any fifth index in this array no this means that there are no more items left if there is like if we have exceeded the array length this means that there are no more items left and if there are no more items left i can simply say that the profit i can make from this area is also zero because i cannot make any better profit than this now it is the time to return the first time in the history of mankind we are returning so look at this closely how do we return if i pick this item how much profit will i make minus infinite plus the weight of this the value of this item fourth item 11 it will be it will be minus infinite only it will stay minus infinite only but if i am not picking this item whatever other people can do that is the best for me so minus infinite versus zero basically minus infinite plus 11 versus 0 what is maximum 0 is maximum this means that it is better not to pick this item i will return 0 don't worry if you not get it didn't get it we are we have to complete this area also this area also don't worry so 3 comma 2 3 comma 2 now 3 comma 2 has to make a choice if i pick this item this is a very important step my friends if i pick the third item look at this third item i will you know remove this now look at this third item if i pick this item other people will be able to make a zero profit and i've picked this item this means that i'll have to add the value of 10 in this number here definitely i'll have to add a value of 10 here now since i'm adding the value of 10 here this means that i have picked this item the value of this thing is added and whatever the other people can do that is also added and if i'm not picking this item whatever others can do best i'll return so they can do zero so zero plus my value versus zero who is better of course Zero plus my value, which is ten. I'll return ten. Okay. I hope it is getting you are getting a hang of it now. Two comma two. Definitely, you can see here two comma two. Right. If we are standing on two comma two, we are we have to make a choice for this. I cannot pick this element. Right. And what's best? You know, look at this. Look at this test case. 
from the 2th index, if I'm having the capacity of only 2, what's the best I can do? I can simply include this person. That would be the best, right? So what I'm trying to do here, 2 comma 2 I'm selecting and from this 2 comma 2, what I'm doing, if I pick this 2 comma 2, the profit will be minus infinite plus what is 2 comma 2? What is the second the value of the second index? It's 12 plus 12. And if I do not pick this item, I'm making a value like profit of 10. What is better? Minus infinite plus 12 or 10? Definitely 10 would be the better thing. So I'll return 10. That not picking this item is the best thing we can do. Okay. So 1 comma 6. We, when we picked 1 comma 6, we made how much profit? Profit. We picked 1th item. This means that the value of this is also added here. So 10 plus 8 is 18. And if we are not picking this item, you know, I'll ask for the next item with the capacity of this. Let us, uh, you know, explore this area as well. So here also I can either pick or I can either not pick. Either I can pick or I can not pick. So if I pick, the next answer will be for from third only. I'll pick and not pick. Next answer will be from the third index. And, and, and remaining capacity is what? Second element I'm picking. This means that remaining capacity minus the capacity of this item, which is three is remaining capacity. If I'm not picking this item, this means that three is the next index I want to ask. And the remaining capacity will be six as it is, correct? First parameter is always the index and the second parameter is also always the remaining capacity. Look at this three comma three. So this three comma three is what we are standing on. And here I can either look at this third item. This is what we are looking at. Either I can pick this item or I can skip this item. If I'm picking this item or I can skip this item. If I pick this item, you can definitely see remaining minus two is what I'm left with. So fourth index is the next item I want to ask whether it's coming or not. And the remaining is what? Three minus two, which is one. Four comma one. Similarly, either I can pick this item or I can skip this item. If I pick this or if I skip this, look at this fourth item now. Look at this. So this fourth item is doing what? If I pick this fourth item, definitely you can see next question will be from the fifth item, but the remaining capacity is what? One minus five. Can I pick this item? I'm only left with the bag of one capacity. And this is this item is taking five capacity. Minus four is the remaining capacity. Definitely negative capacity means I'll be returning a negative infinite from here. Negative infinite is returned from here. If I am not picking this item, this means that, you know, fifth index and one. Fifth index is not non-existent. This means that no more elements are there. So I'll simply return zero that I cannot make any profit if no, no elements are there. So I'm returning zero from here. Four comma one is what I'm standing on. Four comma one has to decide whether it wants to come or it doesn't want to come. If four comma one comes, I'll be making minus infinite plus 11. And if four doesn't come, I'll be making zero. What is better? Minus infinite plus 11 or zero? Definitely zero is better. So I will do what? I will simply return zero here itself and that is why i'm returning minus infinite i hope it is clear to everybody that when the case comes when it's not possible i'll return minus infinite and if i'm not able to make zero I'll make any profit i'll i'll return zero three comma three three comma three is doing what i am either coming or i'm not coming if three comma three doesn't want to come this means that four comma four comma what remaining capacity as it is three this is also like three is also not sufficient for the fourth item so let us see what happens so if four item, fourth items comes and fourth items does not come, fourth item comes, fourth item does not come. Fourth item comes, fifth item, like fifth index is the next index and, and, and three minus five, three minus five is what? Minus two. That is a negative. That is a negative, right? I'll simply return negative infinite from here. All right. All right. Now, if Fifth, like fourth item does not come. I'll definitely reach five comma three. This is of course a positive profit, but still fifth item, like fifth index is non-existent. I'm having no more items. I will simply return a zero from here that I cannot make any profit if no more items are there. Four comma three has to decide whether I should come, whether I should not come. Minus infinite plus the value versus zero. Definitely zero is better. So zero is returned. Three comma three has, has to make a choice now. Either it comes, either it does not come. If it comes, it is able to make how much profit? If it is coming, then how much profit is it able to make? Can I simply say that if it is coming, then I'll be able to make zero plus third item is coming, my friends. Third item is coming. 10 plus 10. 10 versus zero. Who is better? Definitely 10 is better. I'll return 10. Second item has a choice now that now three comma six, like we have to explore. 
So if the third item is not coming, right? Third, like let's say third item is coming or not coming. This is what we have to decide, right? Have we covered this test case before three comma six? No, I guess not. Let's try to explore it. Three comma six. If it comes, if it does not come, I'll just move it a little bit. Move it, move it like this a little bit. So if it's coming, if it's not coming, three comma six. If this is coming, if it is clear, you can of course skip to the recursion code itself, right? Or you can say pseudo code part itself, right? Those who are not clear, I'm still here with you all. I'm explaining this. Don't worry. Three comma six is what three comma six is doing. Uh, simply, you know. Uh, you can definitely say if third item comes, if third item comes, remaining weight is what? Like fourth item is the next item, and the remaining is what was six minus two, which is what? Four. Okay. If it is not coming, then fourth item with the six of with a weight of six. Now look at this. Fourth item is having a choice. Definitely, you can definitely imagine here. I'll be do using a negative weight because fourth item is coming, and I'll be getting a negative infinite for here. Five comma. I'll reach where? I'll reach five comma. 5 minus 4 is minus 1 right so like 4 minus 5 is minus 1 definitely and if i am not coming if this person is not coming then 5 comma 4 definitely this will return negative infinite this will return a zero from from here and what do i what do i have to do here from here i will select the minimum of both zero like maximum of both zero will come out to be the maximum i'll return zero itself right minus infinite plus 11 versus zero right zero is here now if 3,6, now how much profit is 3,6 able to make if it wants to come? So 0 plus the profit of third item, it is 10, 10. If it is not coming, how much profit is, able, is it able to make? It is able to make this much profit, let's see how much. So fourth item, now fourth item, it is a very interesting case. Fourth item can either come or it cannot come. If fourth item comes, fifth item versus fifth item, but how much 6 minus 5 weight left, which is 1. And if it is not coming fifth item with six weight, definitely it is a positive weight, but you can see I have reached the out of bounds of the array. I'll return zero from here instead of minus infinite this time here again, like out of bounds. So I'll return zero. You can see profit. The capacities are still greater than or equal to zero, right? This means that these are valid cases, right? That's why I'm returning zero because I'm not having any more items. Four comma six. If four comes, I'm able to make zero plus the profit of four, which is 11, zero plus 11. And if 4 does not come, it's able to make 0. What is better, 11 or 0? Definitely 11, I'll return 11. Now, if this item comes, to like it's able to make 10 plus 0. If it doesn't come, it's able to make 11. I'll simply return the maximum, I'll return 11. 2 comma 6 has to make a very difficult choice. And this would be the end of the recursion itself. Let's understand this. When we'll reach here, you'll understand everything. 2 comma 6. If 2 comma 6 comes, it's able to make 10 plus the profit of 2, which is 12. And if 2 comma 6 is not coming, it's able to make 11. Definitely what is better? Definitely 22 is better. It will run 22. And this 1 comma 6 can either come. When it comes, it is able to make 18, right? So 10 is what other people can do plus my profit. And if, when it is not coming, it is able to make how much? It is able to make simply, you can say 22. So what will I return from here? I will return 22 from here, right? So 22 is returned from here. And 22 is returned from here. If zeroth item comes, it's able to make 22 plus the profit associated with zero. What is the profit associated with zero? It is six. So 22 plus six is what 28. And this would be the final answer itself. Of course, we have to explore this side of the recursion as, as well. But you can of course complete this yourself. And remember, my friends, do complete these you know trees, right? These are the most important thing in you can say data structures algorithm itself, right? So I think it is clear to everybody that how we are going about recursion. Of course, this tree has to be completed and then only zero will decide about the maximum that what we should return or what we should come or we should not come. But you can definitely imagine that answer is 28 for this problem itself, this test case itself specifically. Let us look at the pseudo code of the recursion as well. And yeah, I hope the recursive tree is clear to everyone. For the recursive pseudo code, you can definitely imagine that what we're going to do, I'll write a function, a recur. I want the values array. I want the weights array, right? This is the values array. These are the weights array and I want the remaining capacity as well, right? Values array, uh, this weights array. And what else do I want? I want the index on which I'm standing on and I want the remaining weight. Correct. This index and remaining is weight is what I'm passing forward, right? So I is the index I'm standing on remaining weight is what I'm making, right? I'll write the base cases a little bit later, but let's just look at the normal approach itself. If you are standing here in the recursion, 
any element is having two choices either it can come or it, it cannot come integer it we include that item include that item if we include that item i'll recur for the future items recursion value will be passed as it is weight will be passed as it is i plus one and what will be the weight what will be the remaining weight right remaining weight will be whatever weight was re remaining for my level right so yeah I think uh, we should move this a little bit to the side. So whatever weight is remaining on my level plus what? Look at this. I plus one. I'm coming. This item is getting. Ith item is coming. Two is coming. So three is the next index. It is I plus one. And the remaining is weight is what? Whatever weight was remaining for me minus the weight of the Ith item. Weight of I. Correct. Correct. Plus, plus whatever this can give me, plus I am including this item. So, value of this item is also added here. Is this clear to everybody? The value of this item. Can you see? 10 was the, like, for the answer for other people. But second value is coming. Second item is coming. And when second item is coming, you can definitely see it is having a value of 12. I am adding an extra 12 here, right? This is this extra 12 itself, right? So, this is what when I do, when I am including, right? This is, this is the whole expression when I am including. I have not written here because I am not having any space here. Let us imagine this is a whole, whole statement, right? So this is the case when I'm including, when I'm not including, when I'm excluding the item, exclude. So I'll simply recur for value I'll pass as it is array, weight array I'll pass as it is, i plus one I'll pass as it is and remaining weight will remain the same because I have not included the current item. Is this clear to everybody? And I'm not adding the value of this item because I have excluded this item. So I have to return what? Return max of include comma exclude so yeah this is the normal case uh, right uh, my handwriting is I, I i know it is very beautiful thanks for you know co your compliments and yeah so i think it is clear to everybody that normal case let's talk about the base cases if someday if someday the remaining weight the remaining weight becomes what less than zero i do what i return minus infinite correct if someday i'll write it in green if someday remaining weight becomes equal equal to zero or right it becomes equal equal to zero then also i'm returning a zero or or remaining weight becomes bec becomes zero this means that i cannot add anything in my bag or if i is equal equal to n where n is the like you can say uh, value dot length or something like that right length of the number of items i'm having if i is equal to equal to n itself this means that i am left with no more items i cannot make any profit i'll simply return zero in both these cases and this is the whole recursive code for this problem itself right i hope the uh, pseudo code is clear to everybody let us look at the recursive you can say uh, code for this problem itself and then move forward so here we are in the code editor itself and what i'm supposed to do here i'll simply do Basically, I'll write a recursive function first. Let us write the recursion function according to the pseudocode itself. Static int recur. I'll pass here integer value val value array, integer weights array. Right. And then integer i, which I'm standing on, the index I'm standing on, and an integer remaining weight. This is the things I want to pass. Now, if remaining weight, let us write the base cases first. If remaining weight becomes less than zero, I will return integer dot min value minus infinite. If remaining weight becomes equal equal to zero, I will return a zero. Setting that I cannot, I cannot add any more items in back. Correct. If i becomes equal equal to val dot length if i becomes equal exceeding the array length this means that i have to return zero i am left with no more items right so i'll re remove this i because it might be confusing this here in comments i am writing i as in i me right not that i in integer right so if remaining weight becomes zero this means cannot add more items in the bag bag is already full no capacity is remaining and if i becomes equal to values dot length, if it is equal to values length, right? If it's exceeding the this means no more items are having, like so I'll simply return zero, no more profit can be made. Now, if I'm including the item ith item, include, so integer include is equal to recur for the other people, val weight i plus one, 
since I'm including this item, remaining weight will be reduced to remaining weight minus the weight of ith item. And I'm including this item. So profit made total is whatever is made by other people plus the value of this item itself. I'm including that value in the profit itself. And if I want to exclude this item, so integer exclude is equal to record for value I'll pass as it is. I'll pass what? Weight I'll pass as it is. And I'll simply do I plus one and remaining weight will remain the same. I'll simply return math dot max of include comma exclude. And that is the recursive code for this problem. Let me write return this recur. I'll write here val, I'll write here weight, I'll write here uh, 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 zero index and W is the capacity of the bag they're giving us. So I'll pass all these uh, parameters. I'll just, let's just compile and run on the sample test cases. I'll of course not submit this because this will definitely give me a uh, TLE, right? I think something went wrong. Let me just refresh the page and try it again. So let us try to run this now. This is of course the recursive code. I'll not submit it. It will give me TLE, right? I have to optimize it using memoization. Let us convert this code quickly to memoization using the trick we have learned. And if you don't know about the tricks to convert recursion to memoization, then memoization to tabulation, just refer to the first video of this playlist, which is Fibonacci numbers. And then you will understand the trick I have, you know, taught in this whole series, right? So, and those who are, you know, solving it along like the whole series itself, I don't think it is very difficult for you all. I'll simply write a function memo. Let me just you know do it quickly. I'll write copy this code recursive code here. I'll replace wherever I've written recur to memo. I you know basically you know re re renaming, renaming the function memo. And here also I'll write memo, right now wherever like here also I have to take a DP. Now what is the dimension of the DP array? I want two parameters are getting changed at one point. So can I simply say that DP will be of two dimensions? DP is equal to new integer. You can say val, you can say n comma w plus one, the capacity plus one, right? n comma w plus one because I am asking zero comma wth person. So w index I need, that's why I'm passing w plus one, right? So this is the DP array I want and I'll pass here the DP array. I'll, you know, of course, rename this as well as memo, right? And here, of course, a 2D DP is getting passed, so DP. And here you can definitely see that DP I'll pass as it is, DP I'll pass as it is. You can definitely remember that is an optimization we are doing. Uh, so, okay, DP array I've passed here. Now only recall and remember is remaining. If DP of I comma, you can say uh, weight, right? If it is not equal to minus one, I'll fill the DP with minus one. I've not done it yet. But if it is not equal to minus one, this means we have tampered it. So I'll return whatever we have calculated the answer for it dp of i comma weight right and if 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 i have not calculated the answer for dp of i comma weight i will calculate it and then i'll remember it for future use i comma weight is equal to this right? so this is exactly what i need to do and this is exactly what we are targeting to do memoization is complete and let me write you know let me fill the dp array with minus one so for integer i is equal to zero I less than n i plus plus arrays dot fill fill the ith array in this 2d array with minus ones repeat this line with me fill the ith array in this 2d dp array with minus ones so every index in the dp i'll be having a minus one and that is the optimization to this problem let's try to run this and see if it is working fine have it done any errors or not yes there is definitely a error there definitely are i have to write a remaining weight here not weight weight I have to write remaining weight here because that is what I'm taking right so remaining weight is what I'm trying to access here also I have to change it with remaining weight itself let's try to run this again and yes it is working fine let's try to submit this it's getting sub submitted successfully let's convert memoation to tabulation quickly and then wind up the video so to convert this memoation to tabulation I'll simply do this I'll simply write a static integer tabulation. I'll pass integer value array. I'll pass integer weight array. I'll pass integer DP here as well. And I'll pass the capacity integer, integer capital W as well, right? So this is what I'm having, right? I need two loops here. I need two loops here, okay? Where will this loop start from? Why am I taking two loops? Because DP is two dimensional. And where will this loop start from? Ith loop will start definitely from base case. So vals dot length minus one. Can I say it will start from n minus one? 
let me consider it as n val dot length is total number of elements i'm having right for integer i is equal to n minus 1 i greater than equal to 0 i minus minus i have to start from the base cases right this is what right this is you can say bottom up approach tabulation right so in here i have to start this loop from n minus 1 to all the way to 0 because i is going to val dot length so it has to in tabulation it have to come reverse right so what about the second loop which is for remaining weight rem weight for integer rem weight it will start from where rem weight will start from where look at this it is reaching 0 this means that i have to start from 0 so 0 rem weight less than equal to the weight the overall capacity of my bag and rem weight plus plus so these are the two loops I'm having and this is how we actually define these two loops. I have defined these two loops. Yes, definitely. I'll simply copy paste this internal code now. Let me copy paste this internal code and 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 now after copying pasting this, let us analyze that what we are actually doing. Okay. So for this code, definitely first step is that I'll remove all the this recall statement, right? Recall. I'll remove this recall statement. And also wherever return statement is written, I will simply remove that as well. Remaining weight will never go less than zero. I'll remove this, right? This here, I have to return and re remember and continue. Wherever return is there, I have to remember and continue. This is what we discussed in the first video of Fibonacci series. So instead of return zero, I will do what? DP of I comma rem weight is equal to zero. And then I'll continue. Here, I will never reach vals dot length. So I will remove this as well. One more return statement is remaining this here. I will remember and continue. I'll simply return this, remove this return and I'm remembering and definitely continue will happen automatically because this is the last line of the loop. Okay. All right. Now I've re removed all the return statements. Wherever I'm accessing memo, I'm calling this memo. I have to do what? Instead of this, I'll access this I plus one comma rem weight minus I. This is what I want to access, right? So what will I write here? I'll, you know, uh, you know, remove this from here. I'll write this here. Right? Now, what index do I want to access in DP? DP of something, something. Here, I have to write I plus one, whatever I'm calling in memo, I have to write here, I plus one. And here I have to write rem weight minus this, whatever this value is, I have to write it, right? So this is what we are trying to access. But can you imagine that I can go like out of bounds? Also, rem weight can also possibly go less than zero. So for this condition, what can I simply do? I have to handle this condition separately, right? So full focus, therefore, instead of doing this, I'll simply write in if statements, you know, I'll do simply this. So let, let me handle it separately. Okay. Here I can go out of bounds and rem or rem weight can go minus into like minus negative numbers. I have to handle these cases separately such that when I'm doing I plus one, when I reaching is out of bounds, then I have to return zero, right? When rem weight is going less than zero, then I have to return infinite. So this is somewhat a peculiar case. Let us, you know, handle it separately. So full focus, if, if, if rem weight minus weight of I, this is less than zero. So include will become what? Can I simply make it integer dot min value? Yes, definitely I can. Right. Else, else, else. If, 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 if. I plus 1 is equal equal to N. Can I simply add 0 to it? Right. We don't need to add 0, but I'll simply add 0 for the sake of this recursion itself. So I'm adding 0 here. I hope you understand why, uh, we are, why are we doing here. Whenever we are trying to write DP, I've removed those edge cases, right? These edge cases when I'm going out of bounds. But I have to handle them separately, right? So whenever I plus one becomes equal to N or, 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 you know, rem weight, this value becomes equal to zero. I have to add a zero here. Rem weight equal to zero. Like I am, add, I am writing this just for the sake of explanation. You can of course skip this line of code if you want. I want to explain everything. That's why I'm writing these lines, right? So else, 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 if none of these condition is true, if this index is also in the bounds and this index is also in the bounds, I'll simply in the include, I will add what? plus equal to what val of i uh, this rem weight this dp of i plus one comma rem weight minus weight of i this index i'll try to access right 
so what i'm trying to do here i'm trying to add anything right if is there anything like out of bounds condition right if i'm including also the people for which i'm calculating the answer after this particular index should also come here right so this is where i'm handling the edge cases right exclude in this case of exclude definitely i plus one can go out of bounds right so here i can use the ternary operator only instead of writing this memo thing i will simply write i will simply write this memo thing here so i'll simply write here you know i'll simply try to access dp of i plus one comma rn bit i'm excluding this item that's why i'm writing dp of i comma i plus one comma rn bit all right and definitely this will remain the same in the end i have to return what i have to return dp of something something now for my motion what am i calling 0 comma w here also i'll pass 0 comma w 0 comma correct let us now run the tabulation code itself and i hope this is clear return dp of uh, sorry tabulation uh, 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 i have to pass these parameters integer val weight dp and w val weight dp and w okay i think these are the only things i am doing and i hope that it is working fine let's try to compile it and then see if it is in making any errors okay so it is making some errors let us let me fix these errors so any required but all right okay all right include i am making it to this all right is less than 0 okay weight of i is less than 0 all right here let us see what is happening here so here i am not passing array i have to make this an array right so let us try to compile and run now okay it is going out of bounds let us see where it is going out of bounds array index out of bounds of 3 of 3 so 92 line 92nd line okay here 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 all right here i have to consider this statement right i have not written the ternary operator okay so let me write the ternary operator itself if i plus 1 is less than n then only try to access this index i'll just try to access this index right no why i didn't write the ternary operator here that's why you know that's why i'm writing this statement ternary operator and that's why i'm writing these statements here so that we are not going out of bounds any at any time and we are and, and you should hand, handle the cases for out of bounds as well it's working fine let's try to submit this code itself let's see if it is working with tabulation itself right so yeah trick is exactly the same only thing is like this edge cases can become a little bit peculiar you can handle them by if else statements or ternary operators whatever you like i hope you are understanding whatever we are doing in this uh, this series itself and i hope you are getting a hang of dp itself we are discussing very classical problems to dynamic programming and these are top notch problems you should know you must know these problems in order to crack any interview which might involve dynamic programming right i hope you all are enjoying videos thanks a lot for watching this video as well uh, if you are enjoying the content please support the channel please share it with your friends spread the word and yeah i hope you all enjoy the content this is for this video until the next video folks